How about some good news here, huh? There we go. Let's how about some good news here. First Corinthians, starting first Corinthians here. The first epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians. It says this. Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, and Sosthenes our brother, unto the church of God which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of the Lord, that, that call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Grace be unto you in peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always on your behalf, for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ, that in everything ye are enriched by him, in all utterance and in all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gift, Waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I like this here. Waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is verse 7 here. Who shall also confirm you unto the end? I like that. Unto the end. That ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. See? See, when God saves us and starts his good work in us at the moment of salvation... Um, he, he, could, he will finish it to the very end it says who shall also confirm you unto the end that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ so, so once God begins that good work in us at the very moment that we believe the gospel that we place our faith our trust in Jesus Christ for salvation God says here in verse um, 8 here, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 8, Who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Says God is faithful, by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So here, let's stop here for a second. So God wants us to think the same thing, believe the same thing. Um, that's why we got so many different denominations, so many different religious movements, is because people do not do what it says here in verse 10. Let me read this again. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you. And that's what denominations are, just a bunch of different divisions. Because there's only one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, the Bible tells us. And um, the divisions that are among us as Christians is because of not following the Word of God not rightly dividing the word of truth following man's teachings rather than following what's written in God's word, the Bible. So that's what the problem is. That's why there are divisions. Like you see the charismatic movement, which is definitely not of God. The Pentecostal charismatic movement not of God whatsoever, folks. So let's read this verse 10 again. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing. This is in regards to teaching, to Christian teaching, to um, doctrine here. And that, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I of Apollos, and I of Cephas, or, yeah, C or Cephas, and I of Christ. Says, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were ye baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you 
but Crispus and Gaius. And we can actually go back to the Acts of the Apostles there, where it mentions Crispus of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles. Now it says, starting at verse 7 here, says, And he departed thence about the cause of Paul, and entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshipped God, whose house joined hard to the synagogue. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, this is in the city of, this is in, a, this is at Corinth now, we go back, you know, in the city of Corinth this took place. Okay, and Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house, talk about on Jesus there. And many of the Corinthians hearing, believed and were baptized. So it's the people that heard the gospel here, by the Apostle Paul, they hear, hearing believed. So they heard the word of God, they heard the gospel, and believed. Thus they were saved when they believed, and were baptized. So so they were baptized after salvation. Okay, so then it goes on here. But so we know, this is chapter 8 here, 18 of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles here mentions Crispus. In the Corinthians here now this is the first epistle I'm reading to the Corinthian church here to the believers at Corinth here okay let me go back here um, verse 13 here says is Christ divided was Paul crucified for you or were you baptized in the name of Paul I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus, which we just read about in Acts chapter 18, in Gaius, lest any should say that I had baptized in mine own name. And I baptize also the household of Stephanus. Besides, I know not rather I baptized any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the nine. Verse 14 here. Here's what Paul the Apostle spoke from, from the prophet Isaiah. It says, Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. So that's Isaiah 29, verse 40 in here, chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. So that goes along with Isaiah chapter 29 verse 14. It says, Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this, of this, the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So again, that's how we're saved by believing. There we go. There we go. So let's read this again here together. It says, For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. 
But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that, according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Jeremiah 9.24 is the reference here, uh, that Paul's quote here. So we're going to take a look at that real fast here. This is, Paul quoted this in his first epistle to the Corinthians here. Jeremiah 9, chapter 9, verse 24 says, But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. So let's turn back here to the epistle, the first epistle to the Corinthians here. So, okay. This would be chapter 1, verse 31. Here's the, um, here's the verse. I'm going to start at verse 30, back up to verse 30. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, so this would be a quotation from Jeremiah 24, 24, did I say 9? 9, 24, chapter 9, verse 24. He that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. And chapter 2 here says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ in him crucified. And I was with you in weakness, and in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Now we have received, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So we receive the Spirit when we believe. That's the. So when we're saved, the very moment that we believe the Gospel, we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we are we receive the promise of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is given us when what when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So, verse 12 says, 
Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things which are freely given us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which, man, which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So what we do is, like when we read the Word of God, the Scripture here, we compare Scripture with Scripture so we can get the proper and correct interpretation so we don't take anything out of context or so we can get sound teaching here. So it says this here, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. The natural man is the man that's not saved. It says, For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of the Lord. It says here. And I, brethren, could not come unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not are ye not carnal? For then, who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then, neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built upon, thereupon he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So here's how about the judgment here, folks. This is not talking about any kind of purgatories the Catholics would tell you. It's talking about um, the judgment here when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And we will all stand, every believer will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And we're going to receive what we've done in our bodies, rather good or bad, at that judgment. So it tells us that's what this is talking about. The foundation is none other than Jesus Christ himself, which the Apostle Paul laid for the Corinthian believers here. But we build upon that foundation as believers, though. And if we build, and talks about gold and silver and precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble. And verse 13 says, Every man's work shall be made manifest for the day, talk about the day of Christ, when we stand before Jesus at the judgment seat of Christ. This is only for believers here. 
this is a judgment what we, for our rewards for what we did for the Lord while we were in the body here. For today shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, talking about what we've done for the Lord here. And the fire shall try it, shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, talk about on that one foundation which is none other than Jesus Christ, he shall receive a reward. But if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. Talk about loss of rewards, not loss of salvation. Loss of rewards. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? See, every person that's born again, every the very moment one is saved, born again by believing on Jesus Christ, we receive the Holy Spirit, folks. There's no such thing as you need to get the so-called baptism of the Holy Spirit after one is born again as a second work of grace. No, that's not what the Bible teaches. The very moment when one is born again, they receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is given to those who believe the gospel, those who believe on Jesus Christ. So verse 16 says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, rather Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours, and ye are Christ, and Christ is God's. So let's read one more chapter here, it says, chapter 4, it says, Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ, and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self, for I know nothing by myself. Yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time, until the Lord come, who will bring who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. So it reminds me of what's written actually by Solomon in here in Ecclesiastes chapter twelve, if I could read that real fast here. It kind of talks about the same thing here. So let's turn back to um, the book of Ecclesiastes. One of the writings of Solomon here. So let's go here. Chapter 12. Okay, here we go. We got it. We got it. Okay, chapter 12, is, let's see, chapter, chapter 12, I'm going to start, I'm going to read verse 13 also, but 14 is the main part here, I want to stress here. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. It says, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God, this is the main verse here says for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing rather it be good or rather it be evil let me read this again it says for God shall bring every work into judgment 
with every secret thing, rather it be good or rather it be evil. Let's go back here to first printings here. Verse 5 here, chapter 4, verse 5, it says, Therefore, um, judge nothing before the time, until the Lord come, who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And, and then shall every man have praise of God. In these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes that ye might learn in us not to think of think of men above that which it, it is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hast not received it? Now ye are full, now ye are rich, ye have reigned as kings without us, and I would to God ye did reign, that we also might reign with you. For I think that God hath set forth us, the apostles last, that as it were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Even unto this present hour we both hunger and thirst, and are naked, and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place. In labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer, being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world, and are the obscuring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons I warn you. For though ye have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. So remember the Apostle Paul is writing to the believers at Corinth here. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. For this cause I have sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ as I teach everywhere in every church. Now some are puffed up, as though I would not come to you. But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know, not the speech of them which are puffed up, but the power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What will ye? Shall I come unto you with a rod, or in love? and in the spirit of meekness. So, okay. So, I'm in First Corinthians here. In my good old Bible here. Just did a little short video clip here. So, 